So we are going to use this question in order to understand how to calibrate a thermometer. And let's go straight to the question. In the question we are told that in calibrating a thermometer the following measurements are taken. The length of the mercury thread when the bulb is immersed in pure melting ice is 5 cm and when immersed in steam above water boiling at sea level that is at standard atmospheric pressure is 30 centimeters. So this is the length at 0 degree Celsius and this is the length at 100 degrees Celsius. Now we know that, because this is degree Celsius, we know that pure ice melts at 0 degree Celsius and the temperature of steam above water which is boiling at sea level is 100 degrees Celsius. Part A, we are required to calculate what change in temperature produces a change in length of 1 centimeter. And in part B, we are told, what is the temperature of a liquid if the length of the mercury thread is found to be part 1, 13 centimeters, part 2, 3 centimeters. So let's look at a diagram of this information and see what we can make of it. So here we've got the information. The length when the bulb is immersed in pure melting ice is 5 cm. When immersed in steam above boiling water at standard pressure is 30 cm. So this change in length from a length of 5 cm to a length of 30 cm is given by 30 centimeters we subtract 5 centimeters and this one will give us 25 centimeters so the mercury thread changes by 25 centimeters when the temperature changes by 100 degrees celsius so if we divide the change in temperature by the change in length. Remember this here gives us the change in length, delta L. We are going to get a change in temperature of 100 degrees Celsius divided by a change in length of 25 centimeters and this is going to give us 4 degrees Celsius per centimeter. Now what this means is that when the temperature rises by 4 degrees Celsius, then the length of the mercury thread changes by 1 centimeter. That is the meaning. Like for instance here, we are told that when now the bulb is immersed in a liquid whose temperature is theta, unknown, this length of the mercury thread becomes 13 centimeters. So again, we can calculate the change in length here. The change in length here is going to be given by the new length, which is L at a temperature of theta, minus the length when the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. That is this one here. So if we subtract 5 from 13, so this is 13, minus 5, we are going to get 8 centimeters. And now we want to calculate the temperature of this liquid. It is very simple. We just need to ask ourselves, how much temperature rise produces a change in length of 1 centimeter? And we know it. So the, the new temperature is going to be equal to the temperature rise which produces a length of 1 centimeter times the new change in length, which is 8 centimeters. And this definitely is going to give us 32 degrees Celsius. Even the units here cancel out very well. These centimeters cancels out these centimeters, and we are left with 4 degrees Celsius multiplied by 8 centimeters, and we get 32 degrees Celsius. So that is how we would work out the temperature of this liquid, which is unknown. We can call that theta 1.
and it's here, theta 1. Now, it is also immersed in another liquid. This time, the length becomes 3 centimeters. This length here is 3 centimeters. What is the temperature of this liquid? We can call this temperature theta 2. Now, let's calculate the change in length of the mercury thread. Again, we are going to start by the new length, which is 3 centimeters. We subtract the length at 0 degrees Celsius, which is 5 centimeters. And this will give us a change in length of minus 2 centimeters. Again, we want to calculate the new temperature, which is theta 2. So theta 2 will be given by the change in temperature per unit length, which is 4 degrees Celsius per centimeter times minus 2 centimeters. Again, the units here are going to cancel out, leaving us with degrees Celsius. And this one will give us minus 8 degrees Celsius. So you can see the temperature is definitely below 0 degrees Celsius. Remember, 0 degrees Celsius will be marked at this point. So this mark here would represent 0 degrees Celsius. This mark here will represent 100 degrees Celsius. And the space between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius can be marked. First of all, we start by putting a mark here at the center and we call this temperature 50 degrees Celsius. Then we divide from 0 to 50. We can have five more divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Five spaces. And then between 50 and 100, again we can have five spaces. 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that each one of these spaces will represent 10 degrees Celsius. So we can have from 0 to 10. Then this one will be 20. This will be 30, 40. Then we can have 50. And then this one is 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. We can even maintain this, this spacing and mark another point here of equal spacing like this one and call it 110 degrees Celsius. We can come below zero over here and mark a point here and call it minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now we can go ahead and divide these spaces into 10 smaller divisions like this. We can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Each one of these smaller divisions will represent 1 degree Celsius. So we can repeat this process for each one of these spaces here. And we are going to have 100 equal divisions be between 0 degree Celsius and 100 degree Celsius. That means that one division will represent 1 degree Celsius. When all these marks have been marked on the stem of the thermometer, then we will have done what is referred to as calibrating the thermometer. To calibrate a thermometer means to mark a scale on the thermometer stem. And we can see, we can calculate the temperature of any substance so long as we know the length of the mercury thread that is produced. That is, in case there was no scale on the thermometer, we can do this process. And that is what is meant by calibrating a thermometer. You can see that we can even get temperatures below zero degrees Celsius, in which case we are going to give them minus sign, and temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius, so long as this thread is long enough to accommodate these extra values. If the thread is very short, then 
maybe the interval at which we can calibrate will be 2 degrees Celsius. So we can start from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. But if the space is big enough, we can put smaller marks, so, so long as those marks can be seen with the naked eye. That is why sometimes you find they are short thermometers and they are long thermometers. Those long thermometers with very thin bore, they have got marks almost up to 0 0.5 of a degree Celsius, but they are not very many. So you can use this problem to look at how we calibrate the thermometer and also how we can go about calculating unknown temperatures even if the thermometer does not have any scale. Furthermore, we can plot a graph of the length of the mercury thread, the length of the mercury thread against the temperature rise. Something like that. And the mercury thread can start from zero. That means the change in the mercury thread or even straight the thread of the mercury thread and we are going to have a graph which looks like this. This will be the length when the temperature is zero and this will be the length when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. This one here. This temperature will be 100 degrees Celsius. This is zero degrees Celsius. So when the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, the length is L0. And when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, the length will be L with a subscript 100 here. And then we can look at this change and this change. We can call this change in length and this will be change in temperature. And then we can divide the change in temperature by the change in length. When we do that, we are going to get 100 minus 0 because that is the change in temperature. Delta T, 100 minus 0, which just gives us 100. Divide by the change in length, which will be L100 divided by L0. So L100 minus L0. So this one will be the change in temperature divided by change in length. It will be equal to 100 over L100 minus L0. And you can see that by using this equation here, we can now calculate the new temperature. Let's see how we can calculate the new temperature. Let's assume that at a certain temperature theta, which we do not know, the length becomes L theta. The new temperature is, let's call it theta. There. We are going to look at this triangle here. This triangle here has got this change in temperature which will be theta minus zero. So you can get theta minus zero, which is just theta. Divide by this change here, which will be L theta minus L zero. L theta minus L zero. And this change divided by this change is equal to this change divided by that change. But I know the initial change. Delta T divided by this delta L is 100 minus, if is 100 divided by this value here. So I have 100 divided by L100 minus L0. Now the space here is crowded up. Let me just isolate this, this equation because it is so important. 
And then this equation, I'm going to write it here. So we have theta minus 0 is just 0. Divide by L theta minus L 0 is going to be equal to 100. Divide by L 100 minus L 0. We can get this equation. And you can use this equation to calculate any unknown temperature. So long as we know the length of the mercury thread that is produced when we immerse that thermometer in that liquid. We know the length when the thermometer was immersed in pure melting ice and when it is in steam. We can always get that temperature. We can rearrange this equation further by cross-multiplication. I can have theta over, this time 100, is equal to, now this quantity here will come here. It's going to be equal to L theta minus L0 over L100 minus L0. Zero. And I have a neat equation that I can always use to calculate any unknown temperature, so long as the length of the mercury thread is known. Remember, you need the length of the mercury thread at 100 degrees Celsius, at 0 degrees Celsius, and at some unknown temperature, theta. You need that length. So in short, this equation can quickly be applied to a question like this one. But I've gone ahead and looked at it in detail, step by step, gone ahead and shown you what is meant by calibrating a thermometer, which simply means putting a scale on the stem and marking it on that stem so that we know that maybe one division represents how many degrees Celsius. And then I've gone ahead and looked at a situation whereby we plot a graph of the length of the mercury thread Again, against the temperature. And from this graph, we can see that the inverse of the gradient or the gradient itself will be able to give rise to this equation here. Remember, it does not matter whether we divide delta L by delta T or delta T by delta L. So long as you do that for the large triangle and the small triangle. The small triangle and the large triangles, they are similar. So a change in this length divided by a change in this length will be equal to a change in this length divided by a change in this length up to this point. And that is how you would calibrate a thermometer or use one which is not calibrated to calculate some unknown temperature and finally come up with this equation.